Hey, good morning, Facebook Live. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Uh, just been wanting to do more leadership online, and uh, we've been through a very busy season, intense season of ministry for the last several months, and so I wanted to get back in the habit of doing this. And just been thinking over and processing some different things to talk about and teach about. And so today, um, th- what I'm going to teach about uh, is can be uh, it's targeted towards ministry leaders, people leaders who are going into ministry or leaders who are in ministry or pastors, um, uh, associate pastors, youth pastors, whatever kind of pastor. Um, but it could also be used in entrepreneurial settings and business settings, the teaching that I'm going to give today, because it's very important that we stay on target with uh, what we're trying to do. And I've just been noticing lately, just in talking to different people and connecting with different uh, people and relationships that I have and just going through some different processes, just coming to realize that there's a real misperception and misconception in leadership today, especially as it pertains to ministry. And so I just wanted to get down, uh, you know, as my old pastor used to say when I started out in youth ministry, uh, he'd say, let's get down where the rubber meets the road. And today what I want to talk about, first of all, is you see the title, Suck It Up, Buttercup. Uh, That seems kind of harsh and sounds kind of harsh. I'm not not trying to be uh, harsh to anyone today, including myself, and I'm not trying to be a person who is trying to, uh, you know, uh, put a a bad light on ministry or anything like that. I love ministry. I love being in the ministry. I love being a pastor. I've done it for over 30 years now. And uh, I'm just going to tell you, it's the love of my life outside of, you know, my family and, of course, my relationship with God. And, uh, you know, it's a call. And so I reverence that. I revere it. I respect it. I honor it. And uh, I'm just going to say some things today. And some of the things I'm going to say are going to be tough. Uh, but I just feel like we're living in an era where people are losing, I don't know how else to say this, but losing their toughness. And when I take some of the attitudes and the mentalities and the mindsets of people in ministry leadership today, people who are aspiring to be that, people who are that, it seems like in some ways we lost our toughness. We've lost our thick skin We've lost our ability to face problems. When I juxtapose the way we are today to the New Testament church and the things that they went through, it's, it, it's almost embarrassing. And so uh, I just wanted to address this. I just want to talk real. And I know I'm doing this in a public forum, so there's a lot of people going to see it. But the, but the truth is, um, I think we need to talk about it. And I think it needs, it's something we need to discuss. We need to uh, think about, and especially for up-and-coming, aspiring ministry leaders, we definitely, uh, some of us guys who have been doing it a while, need to speak on this. Because if we don't, they're going to have a real hard time succeeding. They're going to have a real hard time um, uh, getting past or getting beyond some of the things they're going to face. You know they're going to face them. I know they're going to face them. And uh, somebody needs to talk about it. Because if we don't, then what happens is when they go through these things and they're not prepared for them uh, because they're somehow uh, t- looking at ministry leadership uh, through the lens of social media or through the lens of the current cultural structure of our society, um, man, we, we're going to have some disillusioned ministry leaders in a few years. And I have a, I have a concern that the the the... The statistics for lasting in leadership in ministry that are already not great could get worse. And so what I want to do is kind of preempt that by just talking about it. And so, uh, you know, I, I just want to say uh, we sometimes we just need to suck it up. We need to uh, not allow ourselves. And let me, let me just say, everything I'm going to talk about today is not to impugn anyone. It's not to make anyone look bad or feel bad. It's not to make myself look bad or feel bad. It's literally to just uh, get us to realize some truths about ministry and how we have to function in ministry. And so this is not a, oh, poor, you know, poor me uh, pastor speech. I can't stand that. A lot of times I w- I'm not even a part of some networks because that's all it is, is just complaining about ministry. This is not complaining about ministry. What I want today to be 
is a challenge to leaders to say, look, leadership is tough. It is not easy. It comes with all kinds of requirements, all kinds of demands that you don't necessarily even know uh, and won't know until you face them. It comes with all kinds of inconsistencies, all kinds of uncertainties. It comes with some great things, too, some powerful moments and powerful seasons and unbelievable God miracles and incredible moments of the anointing and all of that. It's all a part of the same thing, but we need to talk real about how tough it can be so that leaders suck it up and say, look, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let failure be final or fatal to me. I'm not going to let frustration overtake me and push me out of ministry. Um, and I'm going to get where I need to go. I'm not going to let this new <laughs> idea of everything in ministry is about celebrity. That's it's such a joke. Uh, y- you know, people don't know who you are. And it, it's so funny to me, even some of the most well-known people uh, in, min- in the ministry world, if you're to ask other people in the world who aren't in our circles, in ministry circles, they don't have a clue who they are. And so there's very few names that stand in a list that are really, truly celebrity. And uh, I think if you would talk to them, it's, it's probably more of a burden than it is anything else. And so I just, I just want to encourage us to be about the right things and to lead in the right ways and to face challenges and not give up, but to suck it up, buttercup. And, you know, let me just tell you something right now. If you're a buttercup, don't get in ministry. Just don't do it. Um, and, you know, suck it up, buttercup. That's kind of some West Texas language. I'm sure it's said everywhere. But, you know, this is a tough place where, where we're at. It's tough. It's a lot different than where we came from. We had to get used to it. We had to learn it. We had to develop. Now, I love this place. This place is, is uh, just precious to me and and i and i love being here and and i'll just tell you there were there have been moments over the last six or seven years that i've disdained this place and wanted out and you know you go through these moments and that's what i want to talk about because uh when we do we have a tendency to put blame or think about this or it's that or it's this or it's this person or it's that person. It's this situation or that situation or it's just too hard or whatever the case may be. And we rarely stop and go, could this be that it's me and I have the wrong motives or I have the wrong perspective and I need to get back in line in alignment with the purpose that God sent me and blah, blah, blah. So when I went through that here a few years ago, I'm telling you, that's I had to come to Jesus and Jesus straightened me out. And so that's a part of the motivation for doing this. So uh, I, I just want to, as we talk about this, please feel free to ask questions. Please feel free to make comments. Uh, please feel free to like and heart and share this as much as you want because it's something we need to talk about. So uh, I want to start with a scripture text, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8-12. through 12, And here's what it says. Uh, this is Paul talking to Timothy. And the reason I use this is because it's an older um, pastor leader apostle talking to a young pastor and he's saying look here's some things you need to think about and i'm just going to tell you uh this is not just for young leaders coming up this is for everybody because we're all getting hung up in some areas we're all getting you know our perspectives wrong and our motives wrong and thinking about what is ministry it's not it's not for personal aggrandizement it's not it's not for uh being known it's not for having the coolest social media it's not about being cool at all uh if you are cool man that's awesome uh but you know when, since when did that become the definition of being good at ministry I, I know some guys that are so great at ministry and a lot of people would not think they're in any way cool and they're probably better at ministry than most people i've ever seen and so I, I, just, I just want us to get some perspective, some perspective that goes beyond our western borders maybe, some perspective that, that, that is foundational leadership that works wherever you are, and an understanding of what God wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. So here's what it says, therefore, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version, it says, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in christ jesus before time began 
but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. That day being the day of judgment, the day we stand before him, the day we bring back what is given to us with interest and say, God, here's what, here's what you gave me. I'm bringing it back to you, and here's all the stuff I'm bringing with it. And so uh, Paul says twice in that passage of Scripture, he uses the word suffering. Now, this is not a word we like to use. This is not a word we want to talk about. This is the New Testament. We're under grace, and we shouldn't have to worry about suffering. Well, listen, you can believe that if you want to, but the truth is, if you're in ministry and you're leading and you're trying to advance the kingdom of God, you're going to do some suffering. <laughs> I'm sorry if you like it or you don't. That's the fact. Come and talk to me in 20 years and then tell me if your theology stands about no suffering. Uh, it is hard. It, you're going to go through hard things. So I'm just going to go through kind of things that I have extrapolated from this scripture and just some points that I think will help you. Number one, ministry is not about personal presentation. It's about God's purpose. Um, the advent of social media has really, uh, it's done some really great things. It's enabled us to market better. That's just the truth. It's enabled us to be able to get people outside the church to understand what our church is like on the inside. It's one of the hardest things that pastors go through is getting people to understand before they come in what the church is like because a lot of times people make a judgment about whether or not they're going to go based on assumptions they're making because they don't get it they don't know they don't know what's inside those doors they don't know the kind of people they don't know the kind of ministry and so it's a really cool advantage that social media gives us but there's also some really really negative things that are coming into ministry leadership through social media things like comparison Things like, um, you know, getting hung up on celebrity. You know, guys, listen to me. I know what I'm going to say is not popular, and, and I'm not drawing attention to anybody uh, who's doing anything, but why, would, why do we want that added pressure? Why? Why do we want the added pressure of being known? I, I personally, you know, if people know me, great. It's more important than people in my community know me than it is for people out in the world the christian world to know me but the truth is isn't the focus and the goal that they know christ yeah but i'm i'm working on trying to get them to know christ through knowing me well okay but that doesn't what that's not what it looks like and that's not what it's coming across as and i've i've seen some videos just lately of people who are secular who are not in the world who've been evaluating some things they see coming out of the church now i don't listen to what the world says about the things of god but but i will tell you it's important sometimes for us to put the ear to the ground and say what do people think about what they're seeing and i'm just going to tell you that these comments they were about a ministry that some things had happened and they were making comments and they weren't ugly and they weren't being mean-spirited and matter of fact Ugh, everything they said, I 100% agreed with. And I was like, oh, Lord, is this the way the world is seeing us? And, and more importantly, it's messing us up in the terms of our psyche and doing ministry and putting us on this platform or putting ourselves on a platform instead of allowing God to be on that platform and, and allowing God to use us the way he wants to use us. And what happens is in the context of that, and I don't want to go into all of it. I'm not trying to psychoanalyze ministry. I'm just saying, look, in the context of all that, what ends up happening is we get lost in the shuffle. Instead of using it for what it should be, it seems to me that a lot of us are getting lost in the shuffle. Use it for fun. Use it to pro promote your ministry. Use it to enjoy your family. Whatever you want to do. But let's be careful that we don't get caught up in the attitude or the mindset of celebrity. That ministry and leadership is about us and about us being seen and about us being known. Let's just be satisfied to make Christ known and make his ways known and his concepts known and his precepts known. That's really what's important. It's not, it's not about going to the coolest places or you know, it's not about going where, it, it, you know, I, I, I'm going to go to this place and plant a church. Or I'm going to go to this place and plant a church. 
How about we get back to, God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Where are you sending me? And then being wholly committed to that place. Because I'm going to tell you, wherever you go, cool or not, you're going to face pressures that you've never faced before. And when you do, you better be absolutely 100% convicted that God put you there. Because if you don't, you will root yourself up. You will pull your roots up and you will go because it's not worth it. So I just want to challenge you. Know that God has sent you and don't just be going places because it's trendy or because it's cool or because everybody else likes it or because it looks like a good opportunity. What is God saying? I love the Chris Hodges quote, and, I, and, and we quote it here a lot too, but first we pray. And so make sure that the ministry is not just about you presenting yourself and how cool you are and how trendy you are. It doesn't matter your age. Make sure you're advancing the kingdom based on the will of God for his vision for your life. The second thing is, ministry is a holy calling. Uh, I, I'm seeing more and more that ministry leadership being used to just as, an, as a job, like a, as, a, as a cool opportunity. Uh, and, and, and let me just be honest, it is awesome. It is wonderful. It is excellent. Um, and, and it should be, and we should look at it that way, and we should have fun with it. I'm not being religious at all. I'm just saying, guys, it's holy. And if God, and gals, I should say, guys and gals, if, if God has called us, if God has put his hand on us and said, I choose you, I pick you to be responsible for the souls and lives and ministries of other people, uh, man, you need to take that serious and you need to look at that as a holy endeavor, a set-apart endeavor, a sanctified endeavor. This is God's will, God's purpose, and I revere it, and I reverence it. Let me tell you why. Because if you don't revere and respect what you're doing, what will end up happening is uh, you, will literally, um, <clears throat> you will literally end up uh, falling under the pressure. You'll... you'll Connor, that is reverberating up here. I can't focus. So anyway, sorry about that. We had some noise in the, uh, the studio here. So, so ministry is a calling. We need to respect it. We need to revere it. We need to, we need to love it. We need to own it. We need to be passionate about it. But listen, it is holy, and we need to look at it that way. When you face pressure, when you face trouble when you face situations you need to know your call you need to know this is a deep conviction down deep in your soul number three <laughs> i know this sounds negative it's not negative it's just true ministry's hard this is what paul was telling timothy look there's suffering involved in this what he was going through was prison he was going through he had been arrested and persecuted for the gospel's sake and he'd been put in prison he was writing letters to timothy from prison and he was saying, I'm facing this suffering over just the gospel. And I consider it to be an honor. This was Paul's attitude throughout his whole ministry. I consider it an honor. It's amazing to me, so funny, how we get upset if somebody says something negative about us on social media. Or we hear a rumor about us in community. And, oh, my God, we're falling apart. And, oh, my God, I guess these people don't appreciate me. And, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? I'm just going to have to... I'm just going to have to pack it up. I'm not worth anything. Paul wrote a lot of the New Testament from a cell. I think we need to get some perspective. I think we need to go back to, to realizing that. And, 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 and sometimes when we refer back to this, like I know there are people right now that are going to hear this, and they're going to say, man, you're out of touch. That was way back then, and this is now. Yeah, that's exactly right. This is now with all the conveniences and all the opportunities and all the, the everything at our fingertips and money better than it's ever been and opportunity better than it's ever been. And I, I, put a, put a, us up with our conveniences and opportunities up against all of the persecution and problems and issues and situations and just literal inconveniences of living in their day. It's not even a contest. And that is a shame because we live in a time where we could be doing more than we've ever done as a church. So we as leaders cannot be buttercups. we got to suck it up. 
we got to get this attitude that I am here for kingdom purpose. It's not about any of this other stuff, uh, all of these you know, outside forces and all of this social stuff and all that. No, no, it's about advancing the kingdom of God. It's about changing people's lives. It's about getting people saved. It's about reaching our communities. It's about winning the loss. It's about everything we just did at Easter. That's what it's about. And somehow we get about all this other stuff and, and what we need to do is make sure that every other stuff we do points back to the purpose that we're doing it for and that we don't get frustrated and, we, and we're not weak-minded and we're not pushed around by circumstances, etc. It's hard. It's hard work. Listen, let me just tell you something. There's a problem in a lot of ministry areas, and, and here's what it is. People go into ministry, and they have two problems. One, either they'll treat it like it's uh, some kind of glorified church camp. Like it's just supposed to be all fun and it's all great and we're just having fun and we're just doing around people and we're just and we're not getting anything done. And then you have the other people who it's just a job to them and they want to do it nine to five and they want to go to work and they want to go home and forget about it and that's it. It's neither of those. What ministry is is hard work and kingdom advancement, and it's it's the closest thing to entrepreneurial effort that there is because you don't forget about it you can't leave it at work you can't no you own this you walk this you live this you are this and so it requires this tension in your life of balancing things it requires tension in your life of making sure you're bringing your family along bringing your friendships along that you're not compartmentalizing your life and getting all legalistic about what you can do and what you can't do and you're just full on giving your whole self your whole family all your resources to the kingdom of god that is the nature of the new testament apostle and pastor and teacher and prophet those people lived that way that's how we should live and any reason for us to go no because you know we have this and we have that all of those are distractions we should be using all of that in the context of kingdom ministry is hard it's hard work it's, it's work. It's wondering, are these people getting it? Are they going to grow? Are they going to follow? Are we going to be able to accomplish our vision? Are we going to achieve it? It's walking it out. It's a process, step by step by step by step. It's winning and wearing out. Listen, that, there's a constant tension of winning, winning souls, winning opportunities, winning uh, vision, winning moments. And then it's also man, I am tired, man, it is hard, man, I need a break, man, I'm in a struggle. That's what it is. Because you're not only contending with natural leadership issues, you're also contending with spiritual processes. You're contending with spiritual warfare. You're contending with growing yourself and developing yourself and bringing people along and, and, and trying to win and then having people that take five steps forward and 14 steps back and you're like oh my gosh that's ministry you got to gear up for it you got to you got to get strong about this come on young pastor come on young leader come on old pastor come on old leader come on experienced longevity you know so i know so many pastors that they've been in it forever or they're just starting and they sit in an isolation frustrated and then they put on a face for everybody else that ah it's all great I have lots of friends in my life that text me and I text them that we can actually be honest. And uh, there are sometimes I've got a little group that I do and I, I, don't, I'm not, I haven't been doing it enough, but a group of pastors uh, for small communities, you know, smaller communities, mid, middle to small uh, cities. Um, and, um, you know, there are times I go in there and just put what doesn't work, what didn't work. We failed. And you know why? Because we never talk about that. We're always putting on the face. And you know what? If we don't talk about what's hard, people aren't going to know how to deal with it and how to face it uh, when it comes. So it's a walking out. It's a step-by-step. -step. It's a winning and a wearing out. It's a constant move. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to rest. You've got to be smart. You can't, you can't let yourself in dangerous and compromising situations. Look, it's not just you. Can I just say something? I see a rash, and I, listen to me. This is going to make some people mad. I'm not being judgmental, but listen to me. I see a rash of people falling to sin in ministry as, as ministry leaders, falling to sin and then just moving on like nothing happened. Let me just tell you something. The only thing you're doing when you do that 
the only thing you're doing is you're postponing a major devastation. And if you're having problems before it becomes a big issue, go get some help. Come on, talk to a brother. Get open. Get, talk to a sister. Get vulnerable. Men and women, come on, get vulnerable with somebody in your life who is a confidant, can help you process what you're going through. But let's remember, the Word says we are at a higher accountability. And it's time we started remembering that. You're not just responsible for you. If you're a leader in ministry, come on. You're responsible for the people who God's made you responsible for. So when you do things and you don't have accountability and you make mistakes, you need to own it. You need to get restored. You need to get healthy. And then you need to deal with it. But you cannot listen to me. You cannot just go on like nothing happened. You cannot. And, you, and, and listen, all grace and all that. Listen to me. The Bible is very clear that leaders who lead others astray because of their behavior or because of their teaching or because of wrong doctrine, there is an absolute higher standard for us. That's part of the pressure of doing this. And I, you know, I'm not going to back away from that. And it may make some people mad, but come on, it needs to be said. And many of you are listening to me right now saying it does need to be said. Why isn't anybody saying it? And so I just want to encourage you. Look, it's not about condemning others. It, look, I'm the first one. Let's rush in. Let's, let's get people help. Let's, let's, let's pay their way. Let's do whatever we have to do to get them restored and get them re, re, refurbished so they can get back into ministry in a proper and appropriate setting. But let's not deny it, throw our heads in the sand and say, well, I'm going to lose everything if I, don't, if I don't. No, listen, you headed down a path where you're going to lose more than everything. And how many times do we have to see it? How many times? Do we have to see it before we do something about it? So ministry is hard, and that's part of the hardness of it is that we are responsible not only for ourselves but for those we lead. And I can't be responsible for what they do. No, you're not responsible for their behavior, but you're responsible for yours, and you're responsible for your model, and you're responsible for your leadership, and you're responsible for your teaching. And it's very important that we carry the weight of that. Number four, Ministry takes time. Oh, this is the one that I'm weakest at. I'm just going to tell you, I'm so weak at this. It, I, I am frequently frustrated. And I, ha, I have learned over the last two or three years, God has really given me grace through some, through some really good friends that have spoken into my life and told me to slow down and calm down. And it's going to get there. We're going to make it happen. The vision that God's put in your heart, he wouldn't have put it in there if it wasn't going to come to pass. You're just going to have to be patient and walk it out and process it out. It takes time. It's a process. We all know this, but we're so results-minded. We're so hungry to be able to show everybody what we've done. That's the problem. Suck it up, buttercup. Come on. Don't, don't be so weak-minded that this is about showing off. Come on, this is about advancing the kingdom. This is about lives being changed. This is about things happening that are going to make a huge difference. Come on, in someone's life. It's not about you showing off or showing what you can do. Get your ideas and mentalities of personal success out of this. And remember what it's about. Because if you'll work together with the people who God's given you, and you will honor him and revere him and understand the process and be willing to go through the process and use your patience and 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 and, and understand it's about building people and understand it's about being poured out yourself success will come uh, victories will come but when the victories come they're not for us they're for him remember we're stewards so everything we invest is is a harvest not coming to us but coming to him we get to rejoice in that, and we get to say, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for the things you're doing. But it's not about our personal success. It's about his success. It's about kingdom success. Now, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to do well. Don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to you get, do well, be good at what you do, uh, be, use your skills. for the, There's nothing wrong with that. The ego, we know the ego is what's wrong with it. We get our pride, we get our ego wrapped up in it. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to do well or to excel, but let's just remember where things matter. Let's remember what our perspective should be. Let's remember who this is about. It's not about us. And the more we make it about us, the more pressure we're putting on ourselves. I would dare to say that a lot of the pressure we deal with in ministry leadership is coming directly from ourselves. I would almost say 95% of it. So it's important that we really walk this out. It's a process. It's about people, and people take time, no matter what. 
Well, what about these ministries that have just popped up and done all this over? No, no. You know what? It's, al- it's always funny how no one does the research to find out how long those guys, whether it's this ministry or not, how long they've been in ministry and how many things they've tried and how many risks they've taken and how much they've put on the line. Come on. You just got to be willing to do that stuff if you want that success. And, 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 and no one is an overnight success. No one. Okay? So we need to understand that. And if God does something, if something special happens, it's God. And we should, we should be trying to find out, why is God blessing that? Instead of thinking about what are they doing that's so effective, let's think about why is God blessing that? And get our minds around what we need to do in our relationship with God to get that kind of blessing to happen in us. Come on. <laughs> are you with me? I know it's no fun, but suck it up, buttercup. Um, number five. Well, let me just say one more thing about ministry. It takes time because it's a process. It takes time because it's about people. And we need to remember it's about being poured out. Jesus was poured out. Paul said he feels like he was being poured out. In other words, it's God using us, pouring our lives out over other people to make a difference in their life. Number five, ministry is about loving God so much that you love people so much. You know, the reason we love people is not because we're just so great and we're just so loving and we're just so compassionate. No, it's because we love God so much that the overflow of our love for God, His purpose, His kingdom, His power, His passion, is it, when we love Him that much, it overflows, His love overflows in us, through us, to people. That's why we can love people. Listen, I'm married to my wife over, uh, over 30 years now. And I'm married to her because I love her. She is the most important person to me. She's my best friend. Oh, I love her. She's just the best person. It, 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 she's just the best person. And uh, she's not hard to be married to for over 30 years. She's just wise and smart and sweet and precious and beautiful, and I just love her. But we've had issues. We've had problems. We've had fights. We've had, you know, times, especially in our early marriage, where we're just like, oh, you know, do we really want to be together? And everybody's had that. And if you haven't had some tussles like that, I don't know if you're doing it right, you know. But the truth is, we're we're very bold, both of us, very strong-willed, very, very strong-minded. And, uh, and man, it causes some upheaval sometimes. But the truth is, um, we've stayed together. Yes, we love each other, don't misunderstand me. But we've stayed together a lot of the times because of our love for Jesus. My pastor used to always say this, and it's true. He stayed with his wife many times through many struggles, just like every marriage has, a lot of the times because of our love for Jesus. And when we really love Jesus that way that goes beyond what we want in the moment or what our feelings are telling us, then it, 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 it infuses us with love for that person. And so Ministry is about loving God so much that you love people so much. Listen, if you signed up for ministry for prestige or celebrity, you may have missed your calling. Okay, If you signed up for fame or to be known, you're far from reality. Uh, If you signed up for notoriety, you're not even close to the point. Okay, Ministry is not about any of that. And if it is about any of that for you, it doesn't mean you're not called, but you need to step back and ask yourself, what, what, what am I doing this for? Because even if you gain any of that, you know, the Bible is very clear. What, what, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I know that that's the important thing to a lot of people nowadays. I think, that, I think it's, you know, you see so many replications and duplications all over the Christian world right now simply because of social media. Man, what has God called you to do? Who has God called you to be? You need to stop worrying about people knowing you. You need to stop worrying about people thinking you're cool. You need to, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I wa- everybody wants to be cool, but it, it's ridiculous that we're making that about, that ministry has turned into that. Sometimes I look at some of the things that are being put out in, in ministries all over the place, including ours at some times, and I think, man, was that an attempt? Was that an attempt to really get the word out? Was that an attempt to really minister to somebody? Was that a really a, an attempt to draw people in, or was that just an attempt to show how cool we are? And, and so, man, it's not about that. Let's remember what it's about. I know this is not popular. I know there are going to be some people that will be irritated with me about this. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm talking about the church world today and all of us. We just need to be honest about it. Ministry is not about what we make it about sometimes. And I think we need to, as leaders, we need to have a gut check and we need to walk it out. 
Okay, so number six. If we commit through the pain of ministry by putting our faith in God, He will fulfill His purpose in us. I heard someone say one time that your success in ministry is directly correlated to your pain quotient. (laughs) And I couldn't agree more. Now, let me just stop for a minute uh, because I know it sounds like I'm being negative towards ministry. I'm not. You can hear my voice and the passion of my heart how much I love this. I could not, this is a double negative I realize, but I could not not do ministry. I've had times where I've really under pressure and really hurt and really have pain and somebody hurt me or some circumstance didn't go the way I want or we didn't succeed at something we were trying or I just felt down. You've had those days. And I've thought, man, I'm going to just do something else. You know, I have a coaching business, a leadership coaching business. I thought, man, I've had times where I've thought, man, I just do that. But let me just tell you something. Ministry's not bad. It's the highest call. It is. It's, it's the highest call if you're called to it. If you're not called to it, then whatever you're called to is the highest call for you. But it is an honor. And it is a privilege to be called by God to give your whole life to ministry. I do not look at it as hard, bad, difficult. That's not my perspective of it. But the reality is it comes with difficulties. But can I just stop for a minute? before we all get a martyr's complex, it's not the only thing that's hard. So when you start feeling bad about how hard it is to achieve things with people, there are entrepreneurs out there with businesses that they've started working with people that are having the same feelings you are, that are having the same frustrations you are, that are throwing their hands up just like you are. It's not just about ministry. It's about progress. It's about moving forward. It's about achievement. It's about getting it done. Every, John Maxwell says everything worth having is uphill. And the problem is most people have downhill habits. And that's the problem. That's the point. So I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to make us martyrs today. But I am trying to draw some perspective. And I'm trying to get us to realize how, how much convenience we have, how much opportunity we have, how blessed we are. We're so blessed. And it doesn't matter what place you come from, what race you are, or what money you have or don't have, or what buildings you have or don't have, or what location you have or don't have. It doesn't matter. We are in America. We're in the Western world. We, compared to what's happening around the world, compared to the inconveniences of just living other places, compared to what happened in the New Testament church when it started, come on, guys, come on, come on. Suck it up, buttercup. You've got things that people dream of having. And we need to get back to stop complaining and hurting and, oh, this is stopping me and that's stopping me. Because we all, let's just be honest, it's an excuse. We get to that place because we're making an excuse because we feel like we're not achieving what we want to achieve. Stop it. Go to God. God, am I doing what you want me to do? Am I achieving what you want me to achieve? Is this going at the pace you want? Help me if it's not. Help me, empower me, anoint me, and help me to do it. Come on, but let's get serious about it, and let's toughen up. Let's toughen up. Well, I'm in a a big city, and there's just so many people and so many different beliefs and so many different ideologies, and I'm facing so many political problems. Okay, so you're not in jail, though, right? Uh, I'm in a small town, and man, small towns are just hard, and people are cliquish, and and they just, you know, they're just hard to penetrate and get into and, and make a difference. And people don't want to accept you and you're an outsider and blah, blah, blah. Okay, but, but you're there and God's given you people to work with. And he's given you a vision and he's given you a place to be. Come on, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to sit in jail and go, man, I'm so glad that Paul didn't sit in jail and go, wow, this is horrible. I can't believe this is happening to me. All I'm trying to do is get the gospel out. No, he, he wrote letters. He got the gospel out. He did what he could do from where he was. No excuses. Let's just advance the kingdom. Because it wasn't about Paul. You know, there was even a time where people were preaching in Paul's stead. And they were doing it for their own motivation and for their own fame and for their own glory. And Paul literally had this attitude. You know, they're not doing it with the right motive, but at least the gospel's getting out. Most of us would be sitting in the prison and going, I'm in prison. And they're out there still in my flock. That's the way we would have, that's the attitude we would have. And Paul's like, man, the gospel's getting out. I think we need a perspective 
change. We don't need to be buttercups. We don't need to be soft. My people, that's my people, my people, my people. Listen, if someone is compelled to go somewhere else and they fit somewhere else, let them go. Stop being possessive and understand they're God's people, and we're here to steward them. Uh, that's, another, that's another leadership talk. So number six, if we commit through the pain of ministry by putting our faith in God, he will fulfill his purpose in us. So ministry has pain. We all know it. I don't have to go into it, and I don't have time. But here's the bottom line. Ministry has pain. It does. There are hurts. People hurts. Relationship hurts. Leadership hurts. Frustrations. It has pain. Failures. It has pain. Temptations. It has pain. Sin. It has pain. Falling. It has pain. Come on. Ministry has pain. People don't like you. People get mad at you. The struggle and the tension of preaching the truth of the Word of God and how are people going to receive it. Making sure you're preaching the truth of the Word of God in love and making sure there's a balance. Come on. Feeling that responsibility and weight of being the leader. That's, that all comes with pressure and pain. But what we have to do is just have a high pain quotient. Like, a, like, like you know, we don't let pain overwhelm us. We don't let pain get to us. We're tough. We're tough. Come on. The Apostle Paul was tough. Timothy was tough. Jesus was tough. These were people who faced the worst of the worst. Peter, Peter, it is said in tradition that Peter died as a martyr for the gospel. But when they crucified him, they, they, they executed Peter. When they crucified him, it is said that he did not consider it honorable to be crucified the same way Jesus was. So they crucified him upside down. That's what you call tough. Guys, listen. We, we're in it for the long haul. We're in it to make a difference. We're in it to, to change people's lives. We're in it to save people's marriages. We're in it to reconcile families. We're in it to bring people who are lost and confused back into relationship with God. We're, we're in it to see people healed. We're, we're in it to see this, the, our communities affected, our, our lives affected, our families affected, our, our, our cities, our nation, our world affected with the gospel of God. It's about advancing the kingdom. And it takes tough people to pioneer anything. It takes tough people to push anything forward. It takes tough people to lead when it hurts and lead when you're in pain and being the support and love and care and compassion for someone else when you're crumbling on the inside. That's ministry. And you got to be tough. Come on. If we commit through the pain of ministry, put our faith in God, not in ourselves and other people, he will fulfill his purpose in us. The ultimate goal is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. The ultimate goal is to make his name famous. The ultimate goal is to face hardships and difficulties with faith and determination. Number seven, ministry is not prestige, it is productivity. It's interesting to me how the, the parable of the talents, um, faithfulness, the way we perceive it, is not faithfulness to God. The faithfulness, heard Chris Kane talk about this years ago uh, when she came to our church, Church of the Harvest in Oklahoma City, and she spent some time with us, and she just really, man, she just really got this into us, that, that faith is not, um, faithfulness is not just about showing up. It's about growing up. <laughs> you know, when God looks at you, he invested in you with talents and gifts and abilities, but come on, um, he expects a return. And just showing up and saying, here they are, God, I bring your talents and gifts and abilities back to you, and yes, I have them, they're with me, I have them, just, does it sound familiar? I put, a, I dug a hole, I put your money in there, it's safe. No, what he's expecting and what he interprets faithfulness as is fruitfulness. So when we're in ministry and we're facing pain and we're facing struggles, it's not just about hanging in there. It's not just about showing up, although that's the first part of it. you got to show up. But after you show up, it's time to grow up. Be mature. Be the bigger man. Be the leader. Add value to people. Understand leadership is not celebrity. It's service. Leadership is not about being known. It's about making him known. 
Leadership is not about uh, of, 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 uh, elevating yourself. It's about elevating other people. Leadership is about others. It's about adding value. It's about serving. It's not about us being the boss or us being the, the main thing. or us. Be, it's not about any of that. If that's what you're striving for, you are missing the point. Ministry is not about prestige. It's about productivity. So don't just show up. Grow up. Make something happen. Stay in there. Do something that makes a difference. Challenge mindsets. Challenge assumptions. Challenge your own lethargy and apathy and indifference and laziness. Come on, ministry doesn't abide laziness. It doesn't. It'll crush you. So just, just know that. So here, here's the conclusion. I'm not trying to sound like ministry's bad or that you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying that it's not worth it because it's worth every single thing. It's worth every bit of it. It's worth every sacrifice. It's worth every commitment. I'm just saying we have to be realistic about what it is about. Can you imagine the New Testament apostles complaining about the place God sent them? I don't like this place. That sounds more like Jonah, doesn't it? I'm not going to Nineveh. I don't want to go to Nineveh. Nineveh is a bad place. That sounds like, you know, God had to have a a whale swallow him up to give him some perspective. Think about that. And some of us get in those whale positions because we're not just saying, man, God is sending me. You remember when you first got called and you felt, I don't care where it is. God, send me wherever. I, I I bet you even prayed that. I bet you even prayed, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. You know, when we made this transition going to church, I was thinking East Coast. I was thinking the, the uh, you know, south, southeastern part of the United States. I w- we had some places in mind that we really liked to be and liked to live. And God so- saw West Texas for us. It is <laughs> the complete opposite, literally, of what we were thinking. And, and, and God has cultivated a love and a pat. You couldn't get me out of this place now. And the, and the truth is, we have to be there. God, thank you for sending me. Not, well, I wish I was in this place like so-and-so. If I was in that place like so-and-so, I'd be, so, I'd be doing so much better. Really? If you put that kind of energy and effort that you have passionate for that place, maybe you'd be doing that where you are important for us to think that way can you imagine the new testament apostles complaining about i don't want to go god can you imagine them being upset because someone said something negative about them on social media i'm sure they're human and i'm sure they would have irritations about that but listen these people face persecution they face jail time they face martyrdom i'm not asking us to be martyrs but i'm asking us to live like we would come on can you imagine them saying it's just too inconvenient these people walked everywhere y'all you know how much Paul walked. You know how far he walked? Can you imagine them being more worried about how cool they look or sound than the depth of the doctrine they preach? It seems that our understanding, depth, passion, and preparation intensify when we actually have to give our life for it. So if you're having a hard time today getting used to where God sent you, or if you're struggling with how long it's taking for you to succeed, Or if you're done with the process of helping people grow spiritually. I say this with the deepest affection in my heart. And I say it sincerely with no harshness to you. Suck it up, buttercup. It's supposed to be hard. And take time. It's supposed to take time. And be a challenge. It's supposed to be a challenge. For indeed, everything worth anything is tough. In life, if you're going to achieve, you have to be tough enough to meet life on its terms. Leadership in ministry is about serving people and adding value to them. Sometimes it's hard if it has trials and tribulations and in miscommunications. So let's take the challenge. We know that God created us for this, and we know that he's with us the whole time. Thanks for being with us today. It's been great. I hope you enjoyed it. Share it with somebody, like it, ask questions, make comments, and I'll love to respond to those. Thanks. Bye.